Welcome to episode six of this Food Life podcast. Like Robert said, I'm Donna, and I'm so glad you could join me. This episode, we're going to talk about the value in opening up, the value and strength in being vulnerable. Mm, I know. doesn't sound like we should be vulnerable, but there are times that it might behoove us. So we'll talk about that. We're going to bake a yeast bread. And don't run. Don't go, oh, there's no way. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to take the time. I'm not going to spend 10 minutes kneading bread. Well, this is a no-need yeast bread. It's the simplest bread I've ever baked, and it's so wonderful. And it will make your house smell great. And you can have um, bread with your soup or salad or bread to dip in oil. Oil, several nights if you do this one recipe that I'll be sharing with you, and also some bread baking tips overall. And finally, we'll be talking about the armadillo. Yes, that prehistoric looking creature <laughs> that maybe you've seen on the side of the road, or if you live on the south, there might be one that comes under your porch every once in a while. And it all ties together vulnerability, bread baking, and the armadillo. So I debated on whether I wanted to talk about the value of being vulnerable first, vulnerable. See, it's such a hard word to say. Or if this time I wanted to switch it up and do the food part first. And I think I want to do the food part first. I want to um, do some bread baking. This is not a quick bread as far as it, a quick bread is like a banana bread or muffins, something that doesn't have yeast. This is a yeast bread, but it's the easiest yeast bread I've ever baked. I'm from a long line of bread bakers. My mother is the best bread baker ever. (laughs) And my great grandmother, Aletha Fowler Hensley, who we all called Ma, is where my mom is how my, or she, my, my mother learned to bake bread from her, which that was her grandmother. And um, I'll be sharing some of Ma's tips uh, online at foodlifepod.com if you want to check it out. And we'll talk about a couple today. But why a yeast bread? Well, the reason I wanted to do a yeast bread is because I think it's intimidating for people, and I wanted to um, break down that barrier and let you know that you can do this. You don't need a stand mixer with a dough hook. You don't even need, um, uh, you, you certainly don't need a bread machine. You don't need a rolling pin. You don't need anything special to bake this bread. You just need your hands <laughs> and four simple ingredients. You need the yeast, warm water, flour, and salt. That's it. So this is a very inexpensive, easy bread to make. Now, why did I want to use yeast and bake a yeast bread? Because um, yeast is alive. Uh, You knew that, I'm pretty sure, right? And it's uh, a part of the fungus kingdom. I know, don't let the fungus word scare you off. (laughs) It was probably first used to leaven bread about 5,000 years ago, maybe even before that. And what yeast does is it makes dough rise because this single cell microorganism feeds on the starches and the flour that produces carbon dioxide that makes bread rise. And the thing about yeast is that it's vulnerable to its environment. Get it? We're talking about vulnerability. If yeast gets too hot, it can be killed. If the conditions aren't right, things can go wrong and your bread won't rise because the yeast just won't won't work. So let's talk about this very simple recipe for just a minute. I can almost just orally tell you, although the full written recipe, as always, is online. But like I said, you need four ingredients, warm water. And when I say warm water, it really does... Be, it's best if you use a thermometer and check it. You want it to be about 105 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you don't have a thermometer, I didn't for a long, long time, I would do the wrist test. So I would get my hot water out of the tap or warm water from a tea kettle, whatever's easiest. Put, put, pour some of the water on your wrist or let your wrist, put your wrist in the running water out of the tap. You want it to be not hot but not cold on the warm side of warm, tepid, And it has to be warm enough or it doesn't activate the yeast. So there's the wrist test. You just don't want it to burn your wrist. Um, Or you can use the thermometer. So you're going to mix the warm water and the flour, a little bit of salt, and the yeast all together. Just in a giant, big, the biggest bowl you have, just mix it all together with a wooden spoon with your hands. You're going to mix it. And then once you mix it, you don't have to do anything but leave it in that big bowl Put some plastic wrap over it and stick it in your refrigerator for at least a couple of hours. Or, this is the other great thing about this recipe, up to seven days. Yeah. So if you get distracted or you get busy or you don't have the time you thought you were going to have that day to bake the bread, 
you can leave it in the refrigerator for up to a week. And it just gets tangier, almost like a sourdough. So you stick it in the fridge for a little bit. Then you bring it out. You use your hand. You grab a big grapefruit-sized ball of dough. And you form it into a mound or a, a loaf, whatever you want to, a log. And you just set, sit that on um, a baking stone if you have one, if you don't just on a a baking sheet or on some wax paper, and you let it hang out at room temperature for a couple of hours. And then after that, you take a sharp knife, put a few slashes in the top of the bread, and then you bake it in a hot oven, like 450 for about half an hour. This is an awesome little loaf of, of artisan bread, really, because it's got that wonderful, tough, chewy crust on the outside, but inside, it's so soft and delicious and nourishing. So there's your bread recipe, some tips. Get the exact amounts at foodlifepod.com. And there'll be pictures on there too, so you can see how it looks along the way. And I promise you, this is the easiest yeast bread you'll ever bake, and you'll love it. Your family will love it, and it's wonderful, like I said, with soup or salad, or just cut off a slice and dip it in some olive oil and uh, have a nice bread snack, because bread is not all bad. (laughs) I promise it's not. Now, let's talk about the armadillo. What does the armadillo have to do with bread? Well, the armadillo has that hard shell on the outside. And the armadillo has this ability to roll up into a ball and protect itself from its enemies. And that hard crust of the armadillo can't be penetrated. Now, inside, though, if the armadillo rolled over and showed its belly or showed its insides, it's soft on the inside. So what is the lesson? I like to look at nature, animals in particular, um, sometimes and, and think about how they handle being in this world, and what we can learn from them. And I think the lesson from the armadillo, at least for me, is setting up what you're willing to experience. So just like the armadillo, we can learn how to deflect negative energy. We can learn how to reject things that we don't want in our lives. And we can do it without hiding, okay? Now, how can we do this? Well, this is how I've been doing it lately. And I and I really... I really kind of like this. It's a very simple exercise, but it's helping me visualize, which sometimes I have trouble doing, but this is helping me. Draw a circle on a piece of paper, just a a big round circle. And think of that circle itself, the line of the circle that goes around as the, the shell of the armadillo, okay? That's the armor. Now, inside that circle, write down things you want to experience or your desires, And I'm not really talking about material things like I want a new car, (laughs) although I guess you could do that. But I'm talking about things like peace, happiness, joy, things like that. Those are all the things that you want. And outside of that circle are the things that you don't want that you're not going to let in. And again, think of that circle as your shield. What you're doing is defining your space. You're saying no to the things you don't want. And you're creating or preserving your sense of self inside. So the you're thinking like, well, what do you mean what I don't want? Maybe you don't want conflict. Um, maybe you don't want um, fear. Things like that. Okay? Make sense? Let's go back to the idea of strength and vulnerability. So if there is certainly something after you, even if it's not a bear chasing you down the street, but if there's emotional or verbal ugliness or abuse that's coming your way. You don't want to just roll over and let that happen to you. That's not what being vulnerable in a good way means. You don't want to be vulnerable to that. But here are a couple of examples of how you might want to try on this vulnerability suit when it's time. It could be something like admitting that you don't know something or that you don't have an answer. I think sometimes we get caught up in maybe an argument with somebody, our partner, a friend, or whatever, and we start to think that, well, you just ha- I just have to be, I am right, and I have to prove that I'm right. And even if you have a little bit of doubt inside about your rightness, you think that it's not okay to back down because then you're showing weakness. Well, I'm suggesting that there's power in admitting that you don't have the answer. It doesn't mean you're weak. It actually means that you're strong because you're willing to say, I don't have the answer. Or, you know what, I I might be wrong about that. That can shift the energy and it can change things and it can help get things out of the conflict mode into the the real conversation or the real communication mode. Does that make sense? So that's just one example. And I I don't know that I want to give a bunch of other ones because I think 
That's the most powerful one that I've experienced as of late anyway. So to reiterate, I think there's value in opening up. I think you can find strength and vulnerability. And I really believe that it's the key to enjoying the gifts of this life because it allows you to feel and experience. Because otherwise, you got your shield up, you have it up all the time, you're hiding behind it. So unless you're consciously saying, okay, I want the good stuff inside here, I want to deflect the negative, you have the risk of shutting it all off, the good and the bad. So my suggestion is, like the armadillo, you can have your boundaries, and those boundaries can allow you to accept or reject feelings, actions, negative energy flows from whatever and whomever. It also can allow you to not hide. So you can have boundaries, protect yourself, but not hide from your feelings. Because if you, if we hide, I know if I hide and, and go numb and somebody can say, how are you feeling? I don't really know how I'm feeling because I'm hiding, which I, I'm a good hider. When I was young, when I was a child, I'm not kidding. When I got scared, I would run away. I would go out in the pasture and get behind a tree. I'd go in my closet And I would hide from everybody, and I would just put my hands over my ears, and I would close my eyes really tight, and I would hide from whatever was happening, mostly because I was scared of something bad happening. But that hiding and that that wall and that defense mechanism, (laughs) which may have served me at some point in time, it also kept me from feeling the good things, the the happiness, the peace, the joy, um, the fun. And it took me a lot of years to realize that when I was hiding like that, I was hiding from all of it, not just the bad stuff. And when we hide from everything that can amplify fears, the armor that we put up, the the protection that we put up around us actually becomes our jail. So we are trapped inside that protective armadillo armor, (laughs) and it doesn't always serve us. So the suggestion today is or tonight whenever you're listening to this the suggestion right now is to really think about times when maybe you don't need to put that shield up maybe you don't need your armor maybe it's about opening your heart or allowing yourself to say you know what I don't really know the answer or even something like you know what I'm kind of scared right now that can really be powerful in relationships or even your relationship with yourself when I sit down with myself sometimes and think, what is going on? I'm, I'm spinning, I'm tensed up, I'm obviously trying to avoid something, and I talk to myself, which is okay to do that, you know. <laughs> I try to do it in private, but sometimes people catch me. But when I have those conversations with myself, then I say to myself or I write down in my journal, I feel scared right now. And then I will try to articulate, what am I afraid of? Am I afraid of somebody getting hurt? Am I afraid of me getting hurt? What am I afraid of? But being vulnerable like that with myself, which is a good place to start, allows me to figure out what it is. What's at the bottom of this? Is there real danger? Is there a a bear chasing me down the street? Is there a person trying to physically or emotionally hurt me? In that case, heck yeah, put your shield up. (laughs) put your shield up, get your sword out and get ready to kick some, you know what. But if not, if it's really about your own self and your own ego, then perhaps think about saying something out loud to yourself first and then maybe to somebody else. I don't really know the answer. Not knowing the answer is making me feel kind of silly or stupid or weak, but I just don't know. And there is power in that with yourself and with your relationship with other people. And while you're pondering that, I'm telling you, go bake this bread. The uh, no need, easiest yeast bread ever, only four ingredients. The only thing that you might not have in your house right now is yeast. So go get some and you can use regular or quick rise or whatever. Just get two packets and um, a few cups of flour, you know, a pinch of salt 
and uh, a little bit of warm water, and we're going to bake some bread, and it's going to be delicious, and you're going to love it, and I'll give you some other ideas on how to serve it, and I'll, I'll give you some tips on bread baking, and also some reasons why bread is not all all bad, because I think it gets a bad rap these days, so uh, uh, all, all of that and more at Food Life Pod. Dot com. Come see me, interact with me, find me on Instagram and Facebook, and let me know what kind of food you're wanting to learn how to make or if there's a recipe that you'd like to have for some certain dish or whatever. Uh, I appreciate the feedback. And if there's a topic that you would like for us to dive into or maybe you know somebody you think, hey, she should talk to so-and-so or interview such-and-such, please feel free to give me that feedback. I'm open. <laughs> I'm being vulnerable and open in a good way right now because uh, we're developing this relationship of trust and, and a safe place here at the Food Life Podcast. So thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon.